they say that eyes are the windows to the soul and that a smile is the mirror to the heart. But what happens when a sudden neurological condition robs you of both? When my feet touched the ground that morning, I knew my life was going to be different. I placed my hands on the wall for support, and I staggered towards the door, fumbling to get it open. I struggled down the 13 stairs slowly, disoriented, dizzy, nauseous. My mother saw me, put down her coffee, and guided me gently to the hallway mirror. Mike, we need to get you to the emergency room. My face had collapsed on the right side and was now sunken in. Hours later, I'd be diagnosed in hospital with Ramsey Hunt syndrome, a condition leaving me unable to walk properly, speak properly, function properly. Overnight, I went from being a vibrant, athletic young man, an entrepreneur with his own successful paddleboarding business, to being unable to walk from the living room to the kitchen of my parents' home. A sudden loss of independence, social life, and the identity I had become so proud of. Part of my condition was that my face collapsed. The nerve shattered and it dropped. It looked like I'd had a stroke with my face now sunken in, my one eye now bulging out, my smile gone. I looked like a white walker from the Game of Thrones. And as I stood leaning on the bathroom counter for support one cold January morning, I looked into the mirror and I didn't recognize myself anymore, totally disconnected with who was looking back at me, physically and emotionally. A loss of identity so painful I could barely look. Tears filled my eyes as I clasped my hands to my face. I looked like a monster. And this is how others would now see me too. When we'd go for short trips to appointments or to the grocery store, I would get looks. Everywhere we went, people stared, clearly questioning why this former dashing model-like guy was now needing to hold on to someone to walk, wondering what had happened to his face. I would cry myself to sleep most nights thinking, why me, God? What have I done? I even prayed. We had a lot of good chats, didn't we? Bargaining. Tears soaked my pillows at night while I thought to myself, who will ever love this? Who will ever love a monster? I've researched and found the best plastic surgeon in the country who would fix me, transferring nerves from my leg to the right side of my face. Every appointment would end with, we want to wait a little bit longer, see what natural nerve repair can happen on its own. It can take up to two years. Finally, I needed a way out of the pain. I needed to believe that there was hope. I couldn't imagine feeling like this for the rest of my life. So I pulled out my iPad and I began Googling. Famous people, my condition. I needed to normalize what I was going through. A few names popped up on the screen and right at the top was celebrity fitness guru and founder of P90X, Tony Horton. Just seeing that there was someone else like me, suddenly, I didn't feel so alone anymore. I saw that he had struggled, just like me, and that our shared condition had put him temporarily in a wheelchair, and that he had worked really hard to come back. I tracked Tony down on social media. He had hundreds of thousands of followers and a fan base of millions of people with P90X. What would be the likelihood that he would respond to me but it couldn't hurt to try. I spent hours crafting the perfect message. I tell Tony I used to be athletic, that we have the same condition, and that I'm in pretty rough shape. I press send, and it goes out to the universe. Sitting at home a short time later, 
a message pops up with a friend request. Guess who? Tony Horton, the Yoda to my Luke Skywalker, the one with all the answers. Kind, compassionate, generous. His messages of encouragement and support motivate me. They light a fire in me and I start fighting with everything that I have. It's been almost two years of fighting this uphill battle. Every step painful, but rewarding. Every small win setting me up for my next. I got back on the paddleboard when the doctors said it wasn't possible. In fact, I went on to become the 2020 International Stand-Up Paddleboarding Man of the Year. I won Canada's largest inspirational speaking competition, standing on stage, sharing my story. And today you're looking at a new man with a renewed sense of purpose and a new business, the leader of a global movement and spokesperson and advocate for national organizations helping other people struggling. And as for my eye and my smile, we are now nearing that big day, the surgery I desperately wanted to make me feel complete and normal, the surgery that would make me feel whole again. Only I've realized I don't need a surgery to make me feel whole. I already do. This year has been magical. The love and support, the community and connections but most of all, the self-love and self-acceptance that has come from finding my value beyond the crooked smile and the eye that can't quite close. If I had to go through all the pain again to get to where I am now, I would. Yeah, I'd go through all of it again. No adversity is meant to break us, no challenge, no shortcoming, no obstacle meant to defeat. Our battle scars are here to remind us where we came from, badges of honor. We stumbled, we struggled, we survived. This eye, the window to my soul, this crooked smile, the mirror to my heart. <laughs>